hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Leigh Bella Ralston. Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. Welcome back to another fun hour of learning here with Michaels and Faber Castell USA. Um, let's wait till everybody gets settled. But today is going to be a, a really beautiful class because it is my favorite. I mean, I do a lot of, you know, mixed media. We do a lot of doodling, a lot of painting, but I think hand lettering is um, something that I first fell in love with before everything else. Um, of course, we were, you know, I was doodling when I was young, but lettering was the one that attracted me back to doing art. You know, I have been doing music for a long time, for many, many years, and I've never really touched anything that about art. And then this is just a little backstory while everybody gets settled in here. Um, so when that was my daughter's 13 now, so 14 years ago is when I fell in love with the art of hand lettering. And before we get started, I am using some brush pens in here um, from Faber-Castell with a black edition. Uh, black edition is, they don't write on black. <laughs> it is just the line. The, the whole line of black edition line is made to be affordable and also high quality. So for students, for hobbyists and enthusiasts, you know, this is something that um, it, it is really affordable. It's not going to break the bank. If you want to do, um, do add some more creativity in your life. All right. So today I'll be using a brush pen, but most specifically, I think I grabbed the um, pastel edition. So these are the light colors that we're going to use today. Uh, if you don't have this specific set, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, you can use anything if you have, um, if you have the Faber Castell, the gold Faber Aqua, that was will work too, or the Pit Artist Pen, any brush pen. All right. So I see that we have some young at hearts in here and some kids as well. <laughs> well, brush lettering is a little tricky. So I'm just saying this for the kids that are joining us today. Brush lettering can be a little tricky for you, especially if you haven't practiced any type of script writing or anything like that. It might be tricky, but I have a good news, not just for you kids, but for everybody who's joining us today. Brush lettering, when we say handwriting and then hand lettering, this is something that I often get. It's like, oh, I can't do that because I don't have a good handwriting, right? So it's like, well, Hey, Lay, I think we lost your audio. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I can hear you okay. Can you? Okay, now we can hear you, I think. Yeah. Oh, we lost you again. Um, I had you for a second. Is it working? Yes. Okay. So was was I out the whole time? <laughs> not the whole time. No. Okay. Not uh, the whole time. Okay. Good. Yeah. I should just not move my mic. Okay. Perfect. So this is my handwriting. I just want to really quickly show you so that for the people who are joining us today that says, I don't have a good handwriting. I can't do that. That's my handwriting. This is when I'm like, you know, trying to jot down things in my journal um, for my kids' school. That's my regular handwriting. Uh, this is my hand lettering. I want you to notice a few things while I'm doing this. The way I'm holding the brush pen, this is really important. We don't, when we're doing brush lettering, because it's all about the two strokes, the upstroke, which is the thin, you're going to see it here. It's very thin. Um, that is thin. So that's your upstroke. This is when every time you're writing away from your body, you're going to go light. So with your pressure in your hand, I personally have a heavy hand pressure. So my struggle is with my upstroke. So every time you write away from you, you're going to use the tip of the brush pen. You're going to see it has a little body. And then that tip, that is where you can create a thin stroke. So you use that and then you apply really light pressure. And then when you go down, this is the second important stroke which is the down stroke. See, I'm using the tip and the body of the brush pen, and I'm also applying some pressure. So thin, away from me, thick, 
towards me. So when you see all these beautiful brush lettering um, on Pinterest or social media and all that, you don't think that it's because of the pen. Because that was my mistake. When I first picked up a brush pen, I thought, I'm like, I can do that. So I just started writing like this. See, that's the second thing that I wanted to talk about. Aside from the pressure that you're using to apply when you're doing your brush lettering, the speed is really, really important. And the way you're drawing your letters is it's not going to be like when you're doing a cursive writing. Cursive writing, you don't lift your pen, right? But when we're drawing our letters, we're doing it one stroke at a time. So the letter H, I will show you. Upstroke, downstroke. That is one stroke, upstroke, downstroke, that's another one. So when I write H, I stop and pause in there. I almost like kind of situate my brush pen also in my hand when I'm doing this. So I go up and down, that's the stroke. And that's just one letter now, but we did two strokes. So oval like that, and then like this, that's a letter H. So we pause, we let, almost like we let our hand and the brush pen breathe. And the way I do this, it's like, I kind of would roll around my pen. I don't know, it, it just became a habit, but I feel like I am, the way I adjust it, because sometimes your brush pen, the brush tip will fray a little bit. And so just, you know, obvious reason when you do it like this, you feel like hmm, maybe I should adjust it so we'll be have fresh, um, fresh ink. I again, I don't know. Maybe it's just you know something that just became a habit of mine. But I always kind of like move my, um, my pen around this cave of my hand right here when I'm writing. So after one stroke, I almost like okay, I just kind of switch it. I don't know if it's like fidgeting, <laughs> but um. It really does help also. So another mistake that I'm seeing when people are using their brush pen is, again, that pen position, the hand position. So we all hold our pens differently. You know, some I, I've seen some people even hold it here. I've seen hold it here. Um, it's a personal preference, and I don't see anything wrong with it as long as you find the right placement of your wrist. Because when we're drawing, it's all about our wrist, right? Let me switch to another page right here. So first things first, we don't hand, we don't brush letter or hand letter when using our pen like this, like how when we write, you know how when we normally write, look at the pen, it's like upside down, just like that. Now, when we're using a brush pen, this is like 45 degree angle. So I don't use it like this. Uh, you would find me, you would catch me do this sometimes when I have a really light, um, when I'm doing a really light stroke or my upstroke. And then, for example, this, the letter H. Again, let's go back to the letter H. I'm using the tip like this. And I would pause in there a little bit and kind of like switch my hand again. See? And so now I can use the body of the brush pen like that. And then I'd switch it around a little bit again, up, and then down again, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Lost again? Oh, man, we have to no, change the table. Um, I, it it's okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Perfect. So, yeah, um, again, so we have the speed, we have the upstroke and the downstroke. We have the um, position of your pen when drawing and then holding your pen as well. I call this my tripod because notice if I have my pen here just dangling everywhere, I feel like I don't have um, enough control. When it's like pinched in, I call this my cave or I call it my tripod because there's two and then I'm holding it here. The way I'm drawing is that it's all about the risk. My whole body is not moving. My whole arm doesn't move when we're doing any type of brush lettering. It's all about this. So it's all about the wrist right here. So letter, let's try letter L, upstroke, use the tip of the brush pen. And then I'll use the body and I use the tip again, just like this and just like that. 
So when you understand when to apply the thin and the thick stroke, you can copy, or I call this the faux lettering. You can do this with a pencil, with any type of pen by doing the faux lettering. So you don't have to worry about, oh my God, I need to go apply pressure going down or I need to use the tip going up, you know? So you can do this, but as long as you understand where to apply it, then you're gonna be good to go. This is what I mean. What did I say about when are you gonna apply the thin stroke? This is when you're writing away from your body, right? So let's write the love with the pencil. I'm just gonna write it L O V again, letter per letter or stroke per stroke E, right? So when we write towards our body, every time we draw towards us, this is our downstroke or this is when our thick stroke. So you just wanna apply a little bit of extra stroke in here so you can add some width and then we can shade it later. So almost like mentally retracing how we wrote the word love. So here I went up, so this is thin. This is going down, so I'm gonna add a little bit of weight in here. Let me just add a little bit more going up again. So even when you're using a gel pen, even when you're using a pencil, colored pencil, you can definitely do this. Retrace it, okay, up. And then now this one is downstroke. I'll just add something in here like that. Every time you draw something horizontal like this, this is your connecting lines or a crossbar for a letter T or a letter F, those will be thin as well. So it's upstroke and then horizontal strokes are thin, right? So retrace, this one is downstroke. So I'm just gonna add there, up, okay. Just to copy that one, I'm just gonna add a little bit of weight in there as well. All right, so we can just fill that in. Like that, so if you're using a gel pen or you're using colored pencil, then you can shade in this area then you automatically have your downstroke and your upstroke without using a brush pen that sometimes is super frustrating. All right, so are we ready to do our class? We're gonna do Hello Spring. Now, uh, I'm gonna do Hello Spring, but you can do Hello Summer. You can add your name in there as long as you understand going down heavy, going up very thin and very light. So I'm gonna start with a sketch because using a pencil really does help me a lot with, for example, making um, composition, things like that really does help. <laughs> this is my sketchbook. Did you see my little doodle in there? Okay, here we go. I have my eraser. All right. Since we only have two words, hello and spring, I'm going to start with my biggest one yet, which is going to be spring. Now I want to allot a little bit of space at the bottom and the left and the right, and just a little on top. So basically we want the word spring smack in the middle of our paper, right? Um, or your canvas, whatever you're using. I'm using a, just a mixed media journal in here. You don't have to use anything fancy, anything special, um, as long as there's a little bit of thickness or weight in your paper, because the markers might bleed. If you don't mind them, that's okay. All right, so the word spring, the way I would letter my letter S are very different, just depends on my mood. You know, it's like, um, it's almost like because we're drawing our letters, I play around with it so much. And maybe I should just give you a few example and you could choose how you would like to letter your letter S. The first one is this, so you can follow along with me if you'd like. I'm just using a pencil for now, going up. loop, then down, and then here to the left, and then bring it down, right? So that's my letter S. Now, how you can play around with this letter S is you can play around with the size of your loop on top and this loop down here at the bottom. Now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna make my loop on top bigger and the loop at the bottom will be smaller. So I'll go up again, but this time I want to make sure that I have bigger loop on top, like this, see? And then this one would be much smaller. 
The problem with this one is it can look like an ampersand or the word end, right? So you have to be careful sometimes. All right, so the next one is just almost like a regular print S, like a capital S. But I start with this little bit of a loop on top, just like this, and then just make it a little bit more fancy. Now to make it even more fancier, this right here where I ended, I just kind of bring it up and then go to the left a little bit. So just like that. And then with this one, you can add another loop if you'd like, just like that. So that's how you add some flourishes, you know, some extra fancy things in there. Um, but again, if you're just beginning, I always start, I always recommend just starting with a basic. And if you really just want to get better using your brush pen, I would always suggest just kind of like really writing a word over and over until you get used to your um, heavy stroke and thin stroke. Um, I know we do this all, most of the time and we still, you know, kind of talk about our struggles, which is for me, my upstroke is a struggle because I really write heavy. So I have to be more intentional when I'm doing my upstroke and my light stroke. All right. The next letter S is, it's almost like a crisscross here on top like this. So it's like a crossbar, but I'm going to bring this up here and... It's almost like a little fancy loops. Now, see, my problem with this letter S is that sometimes it can look like a T. So make sure you have enough curve here, like this curve right here, because this is what's going to show that it's a letter S, right? So those are just simple ways. You can use this one, whichever you like in there. Now I'm going to go sketch the bottom. I'm going to leave it right here. On, oh, we cannot see it, though. Maybe there. There. Okay, so I'm going to write my spring. I know, kind of like smack in the center. So I'll start with my S. And I really want to make this very simple because we're going to add a little bit of florals here and there, kind of like a few vines. And I'm sketching. You guys know, you should know by now that when I'm sketching, I really sketch lightly because I don't want to have a hard time erasing it later on. Sometimes graphite is hard to erase. Now for my letter P, just like that, right? There's really nothing simple. I mean, nothing fancy. I'm going to zoom, zoom back in just so like this. And then The reason why I love using a pencil first, because later on, I don't have to worry about the placement of my letters. I can just focus on the amount of pressure I'm going to use using the brush pen. So I'm going to do add a loop in here, bring this up. This is my connecting to connect the letter P and the letter R. So I add a small loop in here and then bring it down. And I'm looking at this now. I hope I have enough space for my ING. <laughs> and this is why we sketch. So I'm going to bring it up from my letter I down again. Just like that. I feel like my P, I made it too, um, too wide. And I think we'll be okay. And G. And then... Now, the way you can play around with your letter G, I always do this. I It's either you make it really big like that or you make it skinny and narrow, kind of like, like this. So it just depends on how you like it. You know, because we all write very differently. And remember, we're drawing our letters now. So you can play around with it. Sometimes I make it like over here, kind of like that. See, so it just adds a little bit of character and that's how you are going to find your style when it comes to lettering is that you're just going to make a whole lot of mistake and we're going to take a lot of risk also. See, the graphite is sometimes super hard to erase. So I think I'm going to make it like this, kind of like what I did, but not too, maybe just that. I think that's good enough. All right. Now I'm going to clean up 
erase a part of there. And I feel like my letter S, I feel like I almost want to extend it to here. Because I have so much space, but then I can just add a few vines in there to make it really look very springy. All right. And so now the word hello, I'm going to write it in print. Nothing fancy, just the word hello. You can make it super small. You can make it, you know, medium size like this. But one thing's for sure is it's going to be smaller than the word spring. Okay. And then this top one, I'm going to make a little daisy. So a circle. Put some flowers. So we're working on our placement now. Last two weeks ago, we were practicing how to create some whimsical um, critters. So we did um, some bee. I want to add a bee in here if you want to add your flower in here. Um, I mean, some butterflies maybe. I think I'm going to add a bee to keep things super simple because I want it to be about the lettering. But these are just our small little tiny embellishments in here. So it's almost just like a teardrop size, right? My my bee. And then I'll add some very small part for the face. It's like this. Like that. And then we can start adding our vine. Do you want your flower in here? Kind of like a eucalyptus looking. Um, so just like that. Again, nothing fancy. We just want to add some embellishments in here. And this one too, I'm going to add some vine in here. So I'm just adding like that teardrop shape. Just like that. I feel like this one, I want to make this part of the letter like a vine. So I'll just add the leaves. Just like that. And then now we can add more later on, but this is basically what I'm going to work with. That's what we have. So hello spring. If you feel like, okay, I wanna adjust a little bit here and there, then it's the perfect time to do so. Now this time I'm going to, I know, I know, sometimes they're like, why are you erasing? But we have to erase it, not all of it, just a little bit to give us a guide, the perfect guide. Ooh, my putty eraser is really dirty, so I haven't cleaned it. That's why my page is turning messy with a lot of graphite. Okay, I'll just clean it up later. Okay, so I want my word spring. I have the light pink and the coral. I, oh, this is the one that's broken. I, I'm going to go grab a different, same color. Okay. So I'm going to start with my light pink. Make sure that you erase just enough because once you apply your marker here, especially if we're using a light color, it can look like a mess when you have like some pencil marks in there. So just be mindful. But if you don't mind, it's okay also, All right? So this time, because we've already put in our base, which is our sketch of the word spring, we can almost do this like a faux lettering. I still want you to practice though, the light going up and then the heavy going down. Now we can always, this is what I always remind my students is that you can always come back and add a little bit more extra weight and you know parts of it if you feel like, oh, that's not thick enough or I don't really see a difference from my thin and thick. Now, how I want you to, to approach this is I want you to be really light with your hand. I think light, think like light as a feather, all right? So if you feel like you're going light, go more, go even more, because <laughs> at least that's with me. I feel like, well, I'm light enough, but you know, I realize that I'm not going light enough, all right? So we start with our letter S, okay? We'll go light first. So using the tip of the brush, we're going to go light on our pressure. And now that you have your sketch, you don't have to do this one stroke. Even if you want to take your time, take your time, you know, because you have your guide already. So 
don't feel like you have to finish this in one swoosh, right? Okay. And so this time I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure, not too much because you don't want it too thick also. Because remember, we can add a little bit more weight to our stroke or our line later. So we're just going to go down, follow in our guide. So I'm using the, the body of the brush as well, right? So you can go up. And sometimes, especially when I do a sketch, I can cheat. I can start from here because this feels more natural to me. You know, going up like this and then bringing this down doesn't feel natural. So since I have my sketch, I can actually start from there like that and then bring this down. That's the beauty of having your sketch, right? Then I'll do the same with my letter P. Remember, just don't go too thick because we can add a little bit more later. Just make sure we add our first base in here. Now, the results of the markers, I always remind you guys this part right here because it's super important to understand that not all papers are created equal. So, you know, different papers will give you different results. And I'm bringing this down for my letter R. See, I feel like I'm getting too comfortable. Look at how thick my letter R in here is. So I'm just like, okay, lay, calm down and really be intentional with everything. So I'm going just as slow as I can. And then I'll do my letter I. I'm gonna bring it up, right? Now our letter N, just bring it down. Bring it up again. And do the hoop. Look, I'm getting thicker. <laughs> Because I'm getting more comfortable. Okay. All right. My letter G. This time I really have to take my time because this is a big swoosh right here that we created earlier. So this is downstroke, so it can be a little thick, but I'm just trying to be careful when I need to go upstroke and do my thin lines. All right, I'll stop right there. I'll just trace it with the tip of the brush pen, just kind of like that. Yeah. All right, I feel like that's good. Now, this is a time where we can add more thickness. So I'm gonna start with my letter S. I wanna bring in more thickness in here. Now, go as slow as you can, which means don't try to add too thick right away. So just go add a little at a time, right? So just little at a time because we can always add more and we cannot take this out anymore. Okay, so that looks good to me. So notice that your letters are going to be deeper the more we add layer. So we're adding like layer on top of the pink. So you're adding a little bit of um, saturation in there. So the more you add layers on top of it, the value of that pink keeps changing. Now we're darker, right? Now I feel like this is thick and this is too thin. So I'm going to go just add a little bit, just a little bit. There. That looks good to me. We're going to fix things in a little bit, but let's just add a bit more thickness. Now I can just go in here, just using the body of the brush pen. Like that. This time I can add more thickness to my letter P. And this is what I always say, you know, when we see like beautiful hand lettering, we see online, we're like, oh, that's so pretty. You know, it takes, it takes a long time to create something like that. And so with patience, but I feel like that's where the value is to whichever it is that you're creating, you know, 
it's crochet or making some jewelries or some art, it's that time that we put into it that gives it so much value. All right. You just want to make sure that your thickness is balanced and equal in each letter. So I feel like the thickness right here in the letter S is, you know, very similar to the P, to the R, to the I, and all that. And then now we add to our letter N. Not too much in here because I was pressure happy here. <laughs> I was just very comfortable and I was just pressing on my brush pen a little too happy. Oops. Be careful when you're adding thickness. Let's go slowly. Here we go. Now I want to create a beautiful ombre or a gradient. So I want to add that coral color on almost like half of each letter. So maybe the top part we can choose. To me, it feels more natural going down my stroke. So I feel like I want to add to the top part of each letter. So we're going to finish up with the pink first. We go a layer at a time. Tracing over this. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with that coral color. And we're just going to add another layer on top. So almost like half of each letter like this. And when we're almost to the um, middle part, we want to create like a flicking motion, almost like I'm going to show you, but I'm going to go color this in first, all the half of this. This time I don't have to overthink this one because we've already done the hard part. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. When we get close to the middle, we want to use the tip of the brush pen and we're almost going to do like a flicking motion. You're going to apply light pressure because we want to create like that feathered um, gradient look. We don't want to have a, a sharp line in the middle. So you use that flicking motion. I love using this technique when I'm using coloring hair or creating um, grass and things like that. So just use the tip of the brush and just flick it, right? Okay, so this time I'm gonna go here. If you really wanna practice a lot of lettering, we have a few projects next month, some classes for lettering as well. Um, some inspiration for like mothers, uh, day card. Um, but of course, you know, everything that we're doing here, you can use it. However, you know, can create a wall art, you can create a card. Uh, even with this one, you can create your own card or like um, printable, things like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go do the flicking motion because I'm almost in the middle part. Just like using the tip of the brush and just flick. And I'll do the same here. Just like that. That's just to avoid the sharp lines. I feel like I need to fix this. There. See what I did in here? Look at that. I made it too thick. <laughs> All right. So just be careful when you're adding your third. What is this? Our third layer now. So just. Be careful with that. They don't add any more extra thickness. Just, ooh, I'm adding thickness in here, guys. Just be mindful of that. Flick, 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 flick. And then it truly gives us this different look. I mean, you, 
you can always do the ooh, goodness the sharp line that's the different look itself but this time i think i want to create that beautiful ombre pretty gradient going up and then down i'll share a secret with you sometimes the more i try to be careful <laughs> and slow i feel like i I feel like I make more mistake that way. I don't know. Maybe it's like over hyper focusing on something. I don't know if it's just me. Do you guys experience that? It's like sometimes the more you try to be careful about something, I feel like you mess up even more. It's like, why? <laughs> I was trying to be careful. Bring this down. All right. Oops. Guys, I keep adding thickness to this. And I think that's good. I am I almost missed this letter S. Really, Anaya? Okay, I'm glad I'm not alone because I am the same way. Don't miss this part for your letter S right here. I also would like to know if you are team brights or are you team pastel colors? I cannot answer that. I don't think I have an answer to that. Because I love both. So I love it. I love both. Bright. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Pastel colors all the way. Oh, I think we have some winners in here. Come on, Bright's team. <laughs> yes to both. I'm me too. I'm just like, yes to both. Yeah. For sure. All right. So let's color in our B this time. So I'm going to just use my yellow. Right now, we all have warm, warm colors in here. So we have our pink, we have our orange in here, and then we have yellow. So we want to balance this artwork by bringing in some, of the, you know, a little bit of cool tones. You know, we can add some blue to our B. Um, we can choose the um, vines to be, you know, this mint color as well. So I feel like this is going to balance that warm. I love bringing in warm tones and cool tones together. Some people like to, if it's warm, they want to stick with just warm colors. Um, sometimes I'm different. Sometimes it's like, okay, I feel like I want to add some cool tones here. But sometimes I do that too. If it's warm, it's just warm tone. Now I'm just going to use the tip of the brush. And remember when we're doing that flicking motion, it's almost the same motion that I'm doing just to add that a little bit of texture to my B, just like this. So using the tip of the brush and I'm just like, like flicking, but making horizontal, very short horizontal strokes like that. And I'm using this mixed media paper and I can see where some of the inks are like feathering and bl blending, bleeding through that yellow. I really like that effect too, like that. If you don't want that effect, I think you should stop here and do that later before you, especially before you do your eyes, I'm gonna see. Because of course, if the paper is still wet, you're gonna create this feathered look, you know. Oop, don't forget the stinger. You cannot forget the stinger. And a little bit of tiny legs. All right. All the colors. Buffy said, all the colors. <laughs> we have a winner. All the colors. All right. I'm just going to clean up just a little bit. Some of the pe pencil marks are slightly bothering me, but I'm sure I can clean it up a little bit more later. And then I'm going to do the flower, same colors as my B. It's to have a little bit of balance in here. I'm going to use the, what's that, the light purple for the middle part of that daisy. And then I'm going to make the petals yellow. Hey, Judith, you are signing in late. Melody said earth tones and fall colors. Oh, fall. It's absolutely gorgeous. See, I'm like, I'm so, yeah, I cannot pick. I can choose 
every season, like spring and fall and then winter, the blues and the purples. Yeah, I cannot. I cannot choose, guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start adding our vine. And this time, please don't overthink this. We've been drawing kind of like this vine since we we're young. So just do your middle part and just add the leaves. You can choose to make your leaves like long and skinny or a bit more round, you know. So just play around and use your imagination. Just add vines in there. Don't overthink it. Just like that. It already is so pretty. I just don't know why my... This is pastel colors, but for some reason, Zoom likes to play around with my colors. And it's really hard, especially when you're teaching art, because it's not neon. This is not neon. <laughs> and it's looking like neon on the screen. So sorry, guys. Here we go. Oh, you can do the hello already. I will choose the same color as the vines for the word hello. But I'm going to do the vines first. This. Love it. And now for this time, we can use the same color to add this thing for our vines. like that you can also add like a, a trail for the bee almost like going in where it flew I love doing that you can use the light purple as well it almost adds like a story So cute. Maybe I can actually use the light purple for the word hello, actually. Yeah, we'll try that. This one looks good. Maybe I actually add like a little bit of purple to here, almost like making like berries. I'm just I'm doing it by threes. Like that. So now we're bringing in all the colors together, and it looks really nice. So when you have a limited color palette, it really does help to make, you know, even when your artwork is busy, but when you have a limited color palette, it really does help to kind of like minimize things down and easy on the eyes. There we go. And then I want to use our yellow. We're going to add some drop shadow. I'm just going to clean out my pencil marks. So with a drop shadow, I'm going to use lines. Um, so instead of like applying a, all like across my 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 letters. Now the thing with drop shadow is that you have to choose where your light source is coming from. So it's kind of like when you're drawing when you're illustrating um, to add where your shadow, you have to understand where your light source is. For some reason, again, maybe it's just a habit, a force of habit. I, I love adding my drop shadow to my left side of my letter. Um, now you can always, you know, um, choose the right. But the key is to choose just one side. That's the key. So it's either add your drop shadow to the left or add shadow to your right side. Now I'm going to choose the left. Of course, feel free to add it to your right side of each stroke. And what I mean by that is this. So our letter S is right here. All everything that's on the left 
this is where I'm going to add my drop shadow. So let's start with this part right here. This is the right side of the letter S. So I'm going to add my drop shadow in here inside. So I'm going to use the tip of the brush and just go down. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between my letter. Uh, the, it's really hard to see, huh? The bright, it almost looked like neon, and I don't know why. Because <laughs> it does not look like neon in real life, okay? So now this part right here, we're going to add a little bit of drop shadow here as well. So again, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between, right? See? Just a little bit of space in between that. So doing the same thing. Like that. Let me bring it down. Just like that. And then this is the right side. So I'm going to add a bit in here. Just like that. And then add to here. All right, so I'm going to go move a little faster. Just like that. Even the inside of my loop for my letter R, I'll add something in there. This almost done, and even here, there's a little bit here in the letter I. I'm going to add a little bit there too, just a little bit. I can add a little bit here too. All right. I feel like something is missing, and I now know, understand what it is. I'm missing a blush for my B. I always add like a blush to every character I draw. It's so much cuter. Like that. Like this. And then a little bit here. just like that. I really love it. Now I need to get my pink and add some blush <laughs> to my B. And then you can add a little bit of like small asterisk in here. Everywhere or stars. You guys know I love adding a little bit more embellishments like this just to kind of fill the space or the page. Little tiny embellishments are like my final touches. Or if you have like a white gel pen, then you can use that to add a bit of highlights on the top right of everything. Just like that. A little bit here. And this is like to fill in that space. You know, you have all this space all around your letter. And it just kind of like ties it all up. Oh, I have to clean out all the pencil marks because I can see it very well. Let me see if I have a gel pen here. This, for example, I have a gel pen, a white. You can add like white. Remember, we added the drop shadow to the left. So we add the highlights to the top right of our letter. So like this, to our letter G, this part right here of our letter N, like that. Super pretty, isn't it? And then here, like that. So we just add all the white to the right side. Like 
even here, this top right here. But that's it. I mean, you can add a little bit of texture to your bee, you know, add some details in there. But pretty much, this is what we have. I'm so glad we were able to finish it because sometimes, you know, I think last week we were able to do our um, our drawing, but we didn't get to do the lettering. So I'm so glad that we were able to do it this time and finish everything in here. But thank you guys so much for joining in. Do we have any questions before I leave you? Next week, we have a fun class. We're going to create our very own mushroom character. I love drawing and doodling with you. Um, always, you know, experimenting and growing in art and being a kid. Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining in. I really appreciate you. Thanks, Judith. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Tina. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everyone. I hope to see you again next week. Again, same time, five o'clock Central Standard here at Michael Stores. On behalf of Faber Castell USA, my name is Leigh Bella Ralston. Thank you, everybody. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>